This is Ken Carpenter speaking from a special booth on the stage of the RKO Pantages Theater in Hollywood. The house itself is jammed with 3,000 people, and outside, Hollywood Boulevard is swarming with other thousands. And small wonder, 1950's most distinguished film achievements are about to be honored by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. This is Oscar night. This is the money run. Sitting on my left in the booth is actor John Lund. During the course of tonight's show, he will chime in to describe the action and keep radio listeners abreast of what's going on here in the theater. Right now, the overture is about to begin. The Academy Awards Orchestra, Alfred Newman conducting. <laughs> pleasure to have seated with me here in our ABC radio booth, one of Hollywood's brightest young stars, Mr. John Lund. Thank you, Ken. Please excuse the croupy voice. I sound like Costello, and I don't mean Dolores. Well, outside the Pantages Theater tonight, there's pandemonium. The crowd is milling around the theater. The searchlights are roving the sky. In fact, the scene is exactly like the Collier's magazine cover of last week, a case of nature imitating art. But inside, there's stillness and expectancy as the orchestra is lowered into the pit, the curtain rises to reveal the stage set, and it's a beautiful set, too. Designed by the celebrated director and artist, Mitch Lyson. Classic white columns against a kind of a watermelon-colored background, a blue foundation, and in stage center, a giant golden Oscar.
Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Mr. Charles Brackett. Fellow members of the Academy, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, the 23rd presentation ceremony of this organization honors the film achievements of the year 1950. 1950. Do you remember last December 31st? Did Americans ever watch the passing of a year with such a sense of relief? The year of Korea, the year of Malik, the year when the Russian land grab became a fact the most obtuse could not ignore, the year when young American blood had been spilled out terribly in what seemed like defeat, the year when household bomb shelters became an item advertised in local newspapers. Already the value and importance of that year has become obvious. Violent as shock treatment, it performed the same function of clarification. The pattern of our American proposition emerged clear from the fogs of abuse and mistrust. Because he was being maligned as an aggressor and an imperialist, the American man in the street examined the social theory, which is his birthright, with keener eyes. He found it valid and generous and inescapable if the spirit of man is to survive. So much for the year in general. What about us in the industry during this momentous stretch of time? Like the rest of the country, we stuck to our own job. That meant turning out pictures, a big divergent bunch of them. Uh, pictures about people with individual problems, big ones, small ones, people with widely different ways of looking at things and laughing at things, the kind of people we're used to. Does that seem a paltry way to face a time of crisis, a frivolous use of days whose dawns were sometimes whitened by the glow of atomic doings in a nearby state? I don't think so. I believe we were affirming our faith in the importance of individual man and his God-given rights, that we were exalting his strange talents for pride and pity and laughter. I believe we were stating anew his wonder at Earth's beauty and his mystification and grief at his own folly. Surely these are matters of high concern in a world and at a time which has seen whole nations of individual men obliterated by a faceless wave. I hope we'll be making such diverse, many-sided pictures for a very long time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our master of ceremonies. Last year at this time, the Board of Governors of the Academy voted a special award which met with wild enthusiasm from our members. It went to a great artist who raised the whole level of musical pictures by his own bootstraps. Who could more artfully take over this stage tonight and Mr. Fred Astaire. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am grateful to Mr. Brackett for his splendid summary and for suggesting how right I am for this job. However, we must remember Mr. Brackett is a writer. What he really means is that I'm a hoofer with a spare set of tails. <laughs> If it's, uh, if it's any comfort, there is a reason for my being here. Last year for MC, they chose Mr. Paul Douglas, one of the new faces in films. This year, they've made a neat balance. They've chosen one of the oldest faces. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was quite a while ago when I first got out here. Uh, I guess the Academy Board thought that was as good a reason as any to choose an MC. Uh, anyway, I am most grateful for the honor, and I'll try, I'll try my best. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Brackett uh, has covered the important aspects of filmmaking for 1950. However, he has not touched on some of the divine flippancies. Uh, during the year, newspapers carried stories on a number of weird and outlandish happenings inspired by the making of motion pictures. For instance, in January, a, a woman near Lakeland, Florida, told her husband she was going to the movies. She came out of the show, beat up a cop, and shot a drugstore clerk. In jail, she explained the whole incident by saying, I always get a big kick out of Walter Pigeon. <laughs> yeah. here, uh, 
here in Hollywood, the, there were a few light trends. Movies began to feature talking animals. It got so bad that one Boston bank is said to have withdrawn its backing on a picture when they caught the producer trying to use a human being. <laughs> yeah, 1950 was also the year of, uh, of the small dark cloud. A new medium of entertainment began to grow, and uh, experts said it was keeping more and more people at home. I refer, of course, to Canasta. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> enough of, uh, of looking backward. Tonight is Oscar night. The prizes are being given for 1950's most distinguished film achievements. The prize itself is a 10-inch statue worth $41. But it is fought for, prayed for, wept over. Believe me, Caesar's legions did not fight harder for the jewel of Gaul. These, these awards are arrived at by a carefully guarded system of balloting. 12,000 people took part in the voting this year. The nominations were made by the members of the Academy branches assisted by the Hollywood Guilds. The final selections were voted by the nearly 2,000 members of the Academy. All ballots were mailed to the accounting firm of Price Waterhouse, where they'd been properly accounted and certified. The results were placed in sealed envelopes and brought to this stage. Opening those envelopes is the business at hand. But before we hit the glory trail, I, I have a note here on the margin. Oh, it again has to do with thank you speeches from the winners. Uh, if you will allow me, I must convey a request from the board asking that you make them as short as possible. As you know, in the past, we've had little trouble with people who have come up on the stage with a long list of people to thank. Uh, <clears throat> there was... Uh, there was one year at Grauman's, a girl took a Beverly Hills phone book up with her. <laughs> another time, another time down at the Shrine Auditorium, an actor started in. We never did get him back. <laughs> this, uh, this is not a gag rule. Uh, feel free to speak your piece, but please just try to remember, on a radio network, it's always later than you think. <laughs> <laughs> 